welcome to the channel. Today, I'm starting a new series of videos called The Bobcast. These are videos that are vinyl related, uh, they're gear related, the, um, just stuff that I think is cool and I want to talk about. Um, I'm pretty much just going to talk about whatever I want. But uh, they're going to be short videos. I'm going to try to keep them under 10 minutes and let's get started. So I just saw the new Miles, da new Miles Davis documentary on Netflix and you know, it's really cool. Incredible documentary, actually. Uh, really got me excited. I got in, um, got into all my Miles records and started listening to them, and it was really fantastic. Um, you know, there is like, I don't know. I always find it weird when a person is has passed away and they make a movie about them, and there's like narration. And I don't know if it's actually Miles talking or just somebody else talking, like Miles, if you know what I mean. But you know, I always find that strange because it's like, are those things Miles actually said or felt, or are they just kind of creating their own narrative for the sake of this movie? Um, you know, because it's like, you know, you, he, you're watching the movie and all of a sudden you hear this Miles voice come in and, and says something like, And that was the last time I ever ate a grilled cheese sandwich. And you're like, whoa, is, is that really the last time? I mean... You just don't know if he really said, if that's how he really felt, because he's not here to tell us. All that said, fantastic documentary, really loved it, and um, it got me thinking about some things that I hadn't thought about in years. And one of those things in particular is the very first jazz record that I ever bought. Uh, so allow me to tell the story. Um, it was probably back in the mid nineties and <clears throat> I was getting into, um, I'm a, play guitar, obviously. And I had a buddy who turned me on to this record. Bam. John McLaughlin, Carlos Santana, uh, Mick Laughlin, John McLaughlin, Carlos Santana, Love, Devotion, Surrender. This is an insane record. They, co they cover Love Supreme on this and some other things. Um, uh, just straight face melting uh, stuff, kind of spiritual jazz fusion, if you will. And um, this really got me into looking for other records that John McLaughlin played on. Okay. And <clears throat> the next one I bought was this one. Bam. Aldi Miola, John McLaughlin, and Paco De Lucia. Uh, Friday night in San Francisco. This is uh, three guys playing acoustic guitar and burning, okay? Absolutely murderizing. Um, just unbelievable. Paco De Lucia, what a guy. R.I.P. Um, just just an absolute perfect master on the guitar. But... So I started looking for other records with John McLaughlin on them. And that brings me to the very first jazz record that I ever purchased with my own money. <laughs> period. It's the first jazz record I ever purchased, period. It's this. Boom. Miles Davis's Bitches Brew. This is a startling entrance into jazz music, okay? Now, don't get me wrong. I knew about all the guys, okay? About Bird, about Dizzy, about Coltrane, about Miles, you know? <clears throat> but I didn't own any actual jazz records until I got this. This is a uh, 2i Columbia, by the way. And, <clears throat> you know, at the time, uh, I got this. I was, <laughs> it was, a, it was an odd, it was an odd moment in time for me. <clears throat> I was probably, you know, getting close to 18, I would say. Uh, my mom had, and, and stepfather had just moved into a new house with a finished basement and they had deemed it appropriate for me to be able to live down there. And so, <laughs> so I had bought this record and some friends of mine 
just uh, as a gift, uh, as a birthday gift or something, had bought me a lot of liquid blue incense, and I had this whole setup going on in the basement. Like, you know, I had my stereo down there, and you know, like a little bit of furniture, and of course, uh, some lava lamps and other colored lighting and stuff. And I was burning this liquid blue incense and just listening to this Miles Davis bitches brew. And my mom probably thought I was out of my mind. Um, <laughs> this is an insane record. It's a beautiful record. I love it. You know, it's always going to hold a place really close to my heart because just so much crazy stuff went on when I started hearing this record. And um, I used to hang around with this girl. I won't mention her name. But uh, at the time, you know, very um, she, kind of a wild girl. Um, and basically, without going too far into detail and getting myself into too much trouble, she, but what she would do is strip down naked in my mom's basement, strut around, and tell me that she thought that she was um, the reincarnation of Jim Morrison. And she would just walk around naked going, I'm Jim Morrison. It was very odd. Miles Davis's bitches brew. You know, she was... Um, she looked okay when her clothes were on, but she was blazing hot when she was naked. But that said, um, yeah, a lot of insane memories. Uh, I was soon, <laughs> I was soon asked to pay rent or leave. So, yeah, I left. But, um, <laughs> but essentially, that is my crash course into Miles Davis's bitches. Brew. Love this record. They go into it deep on that Miles documentary, and it is just fabulous. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how much you need to watch that doc. It's it's really good. It's pro you know, it's great. Miles Davis's Bitches Brew, fantastic record. Go out and get it. Mine's got a little bit of ring wear, but you know what? I don't really care. The, the vinyl is really clean. I'm very careful with my records, folks. You know what I'm saying? I'm very, very careful with them. Boom. So, um, kind of on that quarantine, you know, it's coronavirus time and, uh, yeah, been listening to some records. Uh, last night got super funky, got the, what I call the funk pack here. Yeah. Look at it. Okay. Parliament funk intelligy. Yeah. We're talking about, um, I think flashlight is on this bop gun. This is a dope ass record super funky um sly and the family stone stand hey the um the sound stage on this record and the stereo field on it is absolutely insane you put this thing on and you can hear the uh, well at least on my system because it rocks i can hear the exact location of where everybody in the band's at and it is just fantastic to uh, listen to this record. I know it's a common record and everybody has it, but it is so funky and just incredible. And I got to tell you, I, I don't know the circumstances of Sly Stone and why he lives the way that he does, but it's a goddamn shame that we let him, you know, uh, there's been times when he was homeless and living on the streets out there and everything else. And we should never let that happen to you know, what I consider one of our American treasures. <clears throat> Boom. The meters. Rejuvenation. That's right. <laughs> if you don't know this record, you're crazy. She's holding it right here on the cover. Look at that. But, <clears throat> yeah, because it is on, boom, reprise. Uh, this thing is crazy funky. People say, uh, love is for me. Just kiss my baby. Uh, what you say? I mean, dude, Africa. This thing is dope. Um, yeah. Tower of Power. This has got what is hip on it. I think this is her first record, yeah. Uh, this is so funky. It is insane. Freaking killer. Uh, Prestia on here just burning on the bass. Uh, got those, just that kind of 
going like crazy. Um, it's a dope record. Last but not least, Curtis, Curtis Mayfield. This is so funky, so funky, okay? If you don't have it, it's on Curtis, beautiful label, and um, you need it. Little funk pack I've been jamming while I'm on uh, the quarantine here. Uh, getting getting over the 10 minute mark here. So uh, I am gonna talk about just one more thing. Uh, so I was listening to records and uh, I'm just sitting here and I look over at my preamp and well, let me change let me change angles real fast and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, hold on. All right, so anyway, I was um, listening to some records, and I was sitting here looking at this Dyna stereo preamplifier that I have. Um, this is my Bob Carver uh, Black Magic. And so uh, I'm just sitting here listening, and I'm doing a little EQing on this uh, shit audio Loki, right? And I'm thinking, I'm just trying to dial out a little bit of high end that I wasn't liking. And I thought, what is this switch right here? I never ever mess with that. And I, all of a sudden I started to realize it's a stereo field switch, right? So over here, it's like hard pan to each side. You're hearing channels A and B. And then it, it starts to get, it starts to, bl to sum the channels as you turn the switch this way, right? And by the time you get here, it's it's you're hearing A and B channels through both speakers. It's mono, and then in this one you're hearing uh, channel A through both speakers, and in this one you're hearing channel B through both speakers. But this is mono. This is both channels summed to mono, and holy smokes! I put on the Bill Evans Top of the Gate record, and. It sounded absolutely amazing. So I was like, holy shit, the whole time I've had a mono switch right on my preamp and didn't even realize it. <laughs> so, you know, people constantly ask me in the comments, how do you play your mono records? Is there something you do? And I was just like, I just play them in stereo. Now I can just play them in mono. Amazing. So anyway, uh, yeah. I figured that out about the preamp. That was cool. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just put records on and play them. You know, I'm into gear. Uh, but sometimes, uh, because I've been doing this for so long, I just, I'm kind of a, I just plug stuff in and start using it because that's just what I've always done. So look into your gear. If there's, <laughs> if there's a knob on there you've never turned, you should probably turn it because, uh, I gotta tell you, it made a huge difference in my listening experience. So I'm really stoked about that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I'm gonna be making more of them, obviously. I don't, uh, you know, most people are watching uh, the my finds videos and um, my, the other videos I post don't get a whole lot of views. So um, yeah, I don't think this will, a lot of people will really watch this. So I feel a little more free to um, talk about some things that I might not talk about in my standard videos. So, you know, <laughs> buyer beware. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just how it is. So, okay. Until we meet again. That's right, folks. Bob out.